Hi, bonjour, and welcome to our video series, which was developed to provide information and to support businesses impacted by COVID-19. I'm Jose Farrin, the Business Development Officer of Entrepreneurship for the City of Greater Sudbury and the Coordinator of Regional Business Centre. We're seeing every day that uh, the virus is having significant impact on businesses in our community and that many of them are struggling. Um, that's due in part to the fact that consumers are now staying at home and uh, businesses are being forced to temporarily shut down um, to ensure social distancing. But through this, what we're also seeing is that entrepreneurs are resilient and creative. And some of them are coming up with really innovative ways to continue to operate and to generate revenue. And one of those creative entrepreneurs is Stephanie Pichet, and we have her here today to share her story. Welcome, Stephanie. Good morning, Jose. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy. Absolutely. Um, so thank you very much for, for joining us today. I know that as a serial entrepreneur, you are very busy. Um, so we really appreciate you taking some time to support your fellow business community. Um, so perhaps to get started, we'll ask you um, to tell us a little bit about your businesses and uh, how COVID-19 is impacting them. Well, uh, to start, um, I've been working this last year on opening my very first wine bar in downtown Sudbury, and we were um, delayed with construction and everything for the last six months or so, and we were excited to finally open our doors uh, for January 4th. So we've been uh, busy trying to market that, explaining to people what our concept is, getting things going. Um, getting some relationships done with uh, particular distributors for our wine and for our food service items, and then training staff and getting them on board and getting them up to speed. And we just started feeling like we just took the training wheels off. And uh, so I took a step back just for a short while to open Legacy Suites, which are short-term rentals upstairs from the bar, um, kind of like an Airbnb short-term or long-term format. So I just launched those probably about a month or so ago, and then uh, COVID-19 happened. Um, I also host a podcast about food, wine, and travel, and I just finished taping an episode with my co-hosts probably a little over a week ago, uh, just basically talking about, about a week and a half ago, talking about how, you know, we got to be stay diligent and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I even went and took off to Cuba. <laughs> as a business owner thinking it's a perfect time, it's March break, it's going to be slow, I will be careful, Cuba didn't have any signs of any uh, COVID cases at the time, I think I'll be fine. So of course I get there to find out that they just had their first couple of cases and then everything started blowing up online. I live on my Twitter feed um, since that point and I, we basically tried to um, do things remotely with the staff and I tried to um, we got our first flight home. We finally came home a couple of days ago, but now I'm in this unique position where I'm on a 14 day self-isolation um, as recommended by the government. So I'm actually in the building, but locked away from human beings <laughs> for the next two weeks. So it's very kind of, it's a surreal situation where I'm um, close to where I need to be and I'm back home in Sudbury, which is great. Um, I, I feel safer now that I'm here but I'm still doing everything remotely with the staff. That's including um, trying to train them on kitchen things because we are launching our takeout uh, service today. And I'm still doing just general marketing online and I'm still taking care of sweet rentals because there's still people who are business travelers coming into town. So we got a handyman to come in and switch out and put keyless entry so that we don't have to be here and actually have face to face contact with any of the guests that stay in there. So there's been all these changes that had to happen in a matter of two weeks. Uh, so I would have to say that if I didn't have Wi-Fi, I think I don't know what I would do. <laughs> so it's been crazy. Needless, uh, needless to say. Uh, sounds crazy. Sounds challenging. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, many entrepreneurs can relate to that, mm -hmm. uh, which I also think is why these videos are really important for um, entrepreneurs like you to share your story so that others can learn from you. Um, now, uh, I talked about your, your social media and how we're, we're seeing some things. Um, it looks as though you're adapting very uh new strategies. Um, so can you share a little bit more details about some of the ways that you're, um, you're pivoting your business now that uh, restaurants and bars are closed? Well, I think I had to, um, my first thought uh, was 
as any business person, you always need to, um, basically you're still trying to sell your product. So when you sit down and you think about it, like what is it that I have to sell? So our revenue sources, since we opened, um, besides selling wine, of course, which uh, believe it or not, we have had calls with people asking if, they can, if we can deliver wine to them. So no, unfortunately, legal thing says, no, we can't. Um, but I said, okay, I still have food. And I know, and the staff and I know how to cook. We have fridges and freezers full of things. So let's figure out the best way to get those foods out. And then the other source of income that was really, um, has been a big hit for us were the wine classes. So every Tuesday we had wine pairing classes in the, um, in the bar and they were sold out um, and they still are right up until the end of summer, which is fantastic. So I thought, well, how am I going to be able to still do those classes? And I remember I've actually hosted a few um, private class classes and tastings for things like uh, I did a bachelorette party by Skype once. I've done um, similar I did things like that, corporate training um, over um, Facebook Live. So I thought, you know what, how about I take those same concepts and maybe we'll see if people are stuck at home and they want to treat themselves, like how can I bring the class to them? So it's basically the same thing, but just repackage it differently. So I already had a class coming up for this Tuesday, which was filled out. And I contacted the, um, it happened to be by coincidence, it was one lady who booked out all the seats for her and her friends. So they're going to come and book some other time. But I said, well, I still had it planned. I still had the wine list ready to go. I still had some menu items ready to go. So how about I launch it, but virtually? So I came up with some notes uh, while I was killing time at the airport <laughs> and I came up with some notes and I said, okay, well, I can still do this. I can get the staff to make the food and they can, people can order it to pick it up or we can arrange for delivery. And then I would add them to a Facebook group, secret group or private group. So it's only the people for the class. Um, and they get the link just prior to uh, the class starting or the day before. And when they log into that group, uh, I basically hold the class exactly the same way that I would. I would have the wines in front of me. I talk about each wine. And if they chose to purchase the food pairings, they would still be able to uh, be able to talk about the food things and why it matches that wine. And they could basically have their own little wine tasting party in their home or in their cottage or apartment or wherever they are. Uh, so it gets the bet and I can still have that conversation with them with the, the chat part through the Facebook live. So I can still answer questions if they have them. Um, I will let them uh, stay in that group for a period of time. So this way, if they have direct questions, they can send them to me afterwards and I can go back and um, just communicate with them that way. So it's still keeping up that relationship that I have with a lot of people who have been coming for the classes. I might be getting some new ones out of this, which who may just Tuesdays were never a good thing for them. And now because they're stuck at home, they actually can join us on a Tuesday night. So we're going to try it out for Tuesday and Friday and see how it goes. And then I'll do it twice a week. I booked uh, another two for the following week. Uh, so we'll see how those ones go as well. And I actually added an option for online class only, meaning that if you want to just pull cheese and crackers and things out of your own pantry and cupboard and create your own little um, tasting party, um, you can still um, purchase access to the class and then I still send you the LCBO shopping list and you can still go and get the wines and do it yourself. So there's different price points uh, that is still allow people to participate without having um, a larger um, a larger price tag that might be difficult for some people at this time. Okay well that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that people appreciate, like people stuck at home can appreciate uh, doing something different. And I mean, who doesn't like good wine and, and food? So, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, so it still gets our food in front of people. We still get to sell the food stuff. We still, um, we still get to share our knowledge and our passion for wine that way. I even scheduled one once I'm finished my 14 day hold. <laughs> There's a class the following day uh, on a Friday and I've actually invited all of my staff to join in on the virtual class. So we're actually, all of us are gonna sit down together and do the wine tour of France together. So I didn't tell anybody that publicly, so you're hearing it here first, but I thought it'd be fun for the entire team to be there, talk about the foods and talk about the wine as a group online, as opposed to just me, which I thought would be fun and a good treat for them too, because I'm sure that uh, they're gonna work very hard over the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to treat them with something. That's a great way to motivate uh, mm -hmm. your employees and, and keep them happy. And um, I have to say, it's, uh, 
it's inspiring to see how positive you're remaining through all of this. Um, and where are you finding your inspiration to, to remain positive and find all of these ideas to, uh, to change your business? Um, I think uh, partly it's experience. Um, before I started the bar, I was already teaching classes. So it's just a different format for the teaching. And then um, I was also a caterer in town for many years. So all of that back catering knowledge on packaging and pricing and um, food prep for pickups and delivery. Like I, I already had that as previous experience. So it's a matter of pulling from those skill sets that I've had for the last, you know, 10, 15 years and start just to repurpose them again into something that fits this. And I keep trying to tell myself that I'm only doing these changes on a temporary and a rolling basis. Like this is not going to be forever. And I'm still planning to, um, so I only contact people maybe who have booked tickets for a class like a couple of weeks from now, because who knows what's going to happen in the next month. So if we constantly sit around and say, okay, well, I'm going to shut my business down because nothing's going to come out of this or it's going to be six months, then it, it kind of defeats the purpose of trying all these other things. I know that I'm not going to be constantly doing, we'd always said we were not going to do uh, pickup orders at the bar, but here we are doing them. We may or may not keep them once the bar reopens again. We're not sure. It'll depend on the traffic, of course, and how we can keep up with it. Um, I'm even considering uh, maybe starting catering again if it extends any longer than a, a couple of few weeks uh, for larger format things. So like if there's still a family getting together for a birthday party or anniversary get together or something, I may have some key items that you can do for catering, but we're taking things step by step as opposed to panicking and trying just to throw 20 things at once and see what sticks. Uh, only because I've, I focus better on one thing at a time. Let's get the one thing. How are we going to get that delivered? How is the step by step going to happen? What products or services are going to be attached to that? Uh, and then communicating with my staff has been crucial because they will, they'll give me feedback on, okay, well, I think that's too much. I think we need to start with just this menu, or we need to start with this. Um, let's just do two days a week, or how about when you're for the classes instead of just Tuesdays, how about we do a Friday? Cause people maybe want to relax on a Friday night with their friends or something. So uh, getting that communication with them because they're the ones right now who are in my kitchen doing things. I don't want to overwork them, but I'm also coming up with different things that will, um, give them the hours that they need because a lot of them are part-time. That's, I only have one full-time right now. Uh, some of them are working two to three jobs and depending on what jo other jobs they have, they may have also had hours cut back. So I'm trying to fill the void how I can without breaking the bank. So, you know, by promoting that we're gonna sell gift certificates, um, but we're adding the gratuities for the staff onto the gift certificates. Meaning that, so if you buy a hundred dollar gift certificate, I will put $20 aside directly for the staff and it'll be written right on your gift certificate. We're doing things like that because I need to keep them motivated uh, because a lot of them, especially in the restaurant industry, tips are how they pay their bills. So it's not just the, the hours that I've been clocking them. I mean, anyone can come in and work minimum wage for so many, uh, for so many hours a day, but a lot of them really survived on those tips and with takeout and delivery, it's very surprising how many people uh, forget to tip their drivers or they don't pick up for, do tip for pickup orders. Uh, and I guess because they're used to things like fast food and skip the dishes, sometimes it's added on automatically or you can opt out of it. But uh, it's surprising how quickly that, that mindset can change, even though it's been a restaurant that's only operated as a standalone restaurant and you had no hesitation giving 20% when you were in there. But as soon as it becomes a pickup delivery order, uh, your mindset changes a little bit and all of a sudden you're maybe tipping less or you're just giving them the change from something. It happens on occasion and it's not blaming anybody. That's just human nature because you saw that business as a different thing at one time and now you see something is different. But I, I'm trying to gather things like gratuities for the class registrations, gratuities for this, gratuities for that, to make sure that at least they're getting something to motivate them to continue to want hours and not just to feel disheartened and give up. Because I, I mean, I, once the business reopens, I don't want to go through this whole process of going through hiring again and training and everything else. I mean, I've got a good team now and I want to keep them. So to keep them with me, I need to keep them happy as well. Oh, very good advice. I hope that um, 
other entrepreneurs can uh, come up with solutions to keep their business going, keep employees. Um, I, I hope that they can reach out to experienced entrepreneurs for ideas and that they have like a really good support network to get them through this because I think that is what's going to be needed. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any final pieces of advice that you would have to a fellow entrepreneur who may be struggling right now? Uh, I would say start uh, start reading those, it sounds awful, but start reading all of those emailed newsletters and things that are showing up in your inbox. Um, I know that when you get busy during the day-to-day and working in your business or on your business, a lot of times that stuff is just flying through your inbox and you're throwing it into junk folders and or I'll read it later and you don't have time. I came up with a few ideas. I signed up for a, uh, had a free webinar that was an industry one from San Francisco that I um, signed in for yesterday. So it was one hour of industry people in the bar and restaurant industry just coaching you through, here's different ideas to uh, survive the next 90 days uh, if it ends up going three months. So there's free resources from experts in whatever industry you're in that are happy to share some tips because especially if they're in a consulting role, they're consulting you in your industry. That's how they make their money they are basic they're trying to teach and coach to start off with let them do it and a lot of them are they want to keep that relationship with the same business owners so they are offering all kinds of great advice and ideas and um, there's a lot of people on social media who are sharing ideas between each other there's little groups that are starting here and there so as opposed to i used to tease my son when he was younger that i if you don't have a job your job is looking for a job right that's that until you find that job. And I would think the same thing is, is that when you don't have business, your business is looking for business. So by creating, by looking at what you already have, how you can repurpose it, how can you can um, change the, just the format of how you get it to them. But people are going to be not just creative and selling their services, but I think that people, especially those who are stuck at home, are going to start getting creative and looking for services, looking for things that they can um, not just occupy their mind or their children, <laughs> but maybe um, learning something new that they didn't have a chance to do from before. So there's all of these opportunities that are out there to connect with other people and to still provide some income for your business. It's just a matter of uh, looking for them. There, I mean, with the internet now and all of the online resources, um, sky's the limit. You can pretty much branch out into whatever you want and you don't have to make it permanent. Uh, just keep in mind it can be temporary too. Excuse me. Um, Well, thank you so much, Stephanie, uh, again, for joining us and for working with us as our community tries to support uh, our local business community through these challenging times. Um, This is the second video of a series of videos that is uh, being developed to support you and your business through COVID. Um, So please do check out the Regional Business Centre's Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel uh, for past and upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.